The Life Cycle of a Medium-Sized Star by Liam Higgins and River Smith. All stars form as a cloud of gas and dust called a nebula. The nebula collapses on itself because of its gravity. As the cloud collapses, its rotation forces it into a disk shape with a hot, dense center called a protostar. Once a protostar reaches ignition temperature, nuclear reactions begin and the protostar becomes a star. The first nuclear reaction to begin is hydrogen atoms fusing together to create helium atoms. Once fusion starts, the star becomes stable and truly becomes a main sequence star. The star gradually becomes more luminous as density and temperature rise and increase the reaction rate. With this process, it takes a medium-sized star 10 billion years to convert all its hydrogen into helium. After the hydrogen core is depleted, the star has a helium center and outer layers made of hydrogen-dominated gas. Some of the hydrogen continues to react in a thin layer on the outer edge of the helium core. The energy production in this layer forces the outer layers of the star to expand and cool. The star then becomes a red giant because its luminosity increases while the surface temperature decreases due to the expansion. A red giant loses gases from its outer layers because the star's surface gravity is low and the outer layers can be released by small expansions and contractions. Meanwhile, the star becomes hot enough at about 100 million Kelvin for helium to react and to form carbon. The star contracts back to its normal size where it becomes stable for a while. This phase only lasts about one-tenth as long as the earlier hydrogen burning phase, only about one billion years. Once all the helium in the core is depleted, the star is left with a core of carbon. A medium-sized star is never hot enough to fuse carbon so its energy production is over. The outer layers expand again and are expelled to a shell of gas called the planetary nebula with the core of the star about the size of the Earth at its center. The carbon core left over from the planetary nebula is called the white dwarf. It's supported by the resistance of electrons being squeezed together this electron pressure does not require ongoing reaction, reactions, so it can last indefinitely. The white dwarf gradually cools, eventually losing its luminosity and becoming an undetectable black dwarf.